Despite their best start to a WSL season, Willie Kirk says Leicester have not had their breakthrough moment. Could it come tonight and halt a run of back-to-back -back defeats? He makes two changes for this one. While Jonas Eidevelds Arsenal, the visitors tonight, three wins in a row have parked an early wobble. He makes two changes from their last WSL match, and it comes one of them in midfield with Kyra Cooney Cross. Can Leicester outfox the Gunners? Kick off less than 15 minutes away. Evening all. Oh, how we've gone big tonight. What a strike partnership this is. Izzy Christensen and carrying the weight of all those medals, Bethany England with us. Right, let's get some more medals on the go, shall we? And visit the October Manager of the Month. Willie Kirk is with Jules. You've been talking about the fact that it's a good game to come into after the defeat last week, but also to back-to-back -back home games as well. And you want to take advantage of that crowd you have here. Yeah, definitely. It's, it gets frustrating when there's... You know, the games are so infrequent, so we're looking forward to the back-to-back -back ones. Hopefully, positive performance and result tonight has an effect on next week's crowd as well, because we certainly enjoy playing here now. It's, uh, it feels like home, and, 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 I th and I think most of our performances now, I can't think of the last one that we've been disappointed with, so hopefully that continues. And with Arsenal, not exactly the, the fast start that a lot of people were expecting. Do you think you can take advantage of the position that they're in right now and, and the place that they find themselves in as well? Yeah, I think so. I mean, like the focus has always got to be on us, but we've always got to be aware of our opponents, and, and there's obviously something not, not quite working right. I mean, I think uh, I think Jonas has already admitted that they're far from the finished article, so until they get to that finished article, hopefully we can uh, take advantage of it. It may not be the finished article, but they had that strong start, best start to a WSL season, tailed off of late, but it's still been tight in those couple of defeats. Izzy, Willie talks about the October Manager of the Month being the most important because it shows <laughs> what they've done in, in pre-season. Can you see that? You can, he certainly can. He's been, um, you know, he's been a breath of fresh air since he took the team over and there's a couple of clips which I've highlighted which show what they're all about. This one is Leicester offensively. I mean, just firstly look at the bodies that they've committed to Manchester City's back line. This is a fullback, Courtney Nevin, who's in an advanced position. They come and work the ball and what they end up creating is a fantastic opportunity to score a goal. Beth, you'd have you've had that for breakfast, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> and then this is um, this is Leicester defensively. And what I love about this is number one, the attitude to get back into shape, the number of bodies that are running back. And then this is where Manchester City like to be in control, but Leicester almost say, no, we're in control here. I'm just going to pause it really quickly here and just show you, Peterman, Beth, you have played the lone striker role many a time and very very soon again, I'm sure. And the way that Peterman presses and makes play predictable for Manchester City is absolutely excellent. They almost cut the pitch in half. She carries on her run and she's telling her team, this is your trigger now, and the ball goes wide. Mm. And this is when Leicester jump and they win the ball and they end up getting a throw in their attacking third. But it's fantastic play and it's exactly what Leicester have been about. And like Willie Kirk has mentioned, there is more to come from this team. I mean, that's ominous for, for the rest of those that were fighting out for now those top positions. We've seen where they are. What does it do to have a manager in for that consistent time to create stability? Yeah, it's huge. I mean, we went through that spell at Spurs as well, where we were not quite hitting results that we wanted. And then we managed to find a pattern where we were getting that stability. And I think Willie Kirk coming in, he's shown, he's given them a style of play. He's really drilling into them. The work rate you can see is, is he touched on the defensive shape to get everybody across the pitch, to cut the pitch in half. And he's done a fantastic job on making them a well-oiled machine and they're not going to be a walkover tonight. And just small tweaks needed. I mean, she was flattering you, saying you just start that one away, but you can see what they're trying to do. Yeah, of course. And like you say, it's it's hard when you've come from the back end of last season, being in a relegation battle, but they've started the season off flying. Obviously not had the last couple of results go their way, but they're showing that they're competing in this league. They're getting their rhythm and they're producing good performances. You mentioned Spurs. 1-1 uh, draw for Tottenham today. Yeah. I know you were there. Hot-footed it over here. Yeah. Let's have a little look at the other day's results and a big one with Brighton beating Manchester. Manchester City. This one's raised a few eyebrows. Elsewhere, Manchester United with that win over West Ham. Spurs 1-1 with Liverpool. 3-0 win for Chelsea. That Brighton result. And 2-0 Aston Villa beating Bristol City. Their first points of the season. Right, we have talked a little bit about Leicester. What about Arsenal then? Jonas Seidewell and this Arsenal team actually have never lost to Leicester. 14-0 overall. More of the same Jonas will be asking for tonight. Let's 
Let's talk Arsenal and a trip to Leicester brings the 50 up in the league for Jonas Eideveld. Can he get a 36th win? He's with Jules. Jonas, I know you go game by game, but a real opportunity with results elsewhere in the WSL today to, to shoot up to second. Yeah, I don't care much about that, but I care a lot about this game here now that we have in front of us and we're going to do our very best to try and win that. What kind of test will Leicester give you? I know you're on a good run of form right now. They're an aggressive side. They are the side that fouls the most in the league. Uh, they press with real high intensity. So we need to be prepared when we're playing out from the back to, to be able to deal with that. You made a number of changes. Um, Kim Little being probably the biggest one, biggest name as far as fans are concerned, missing from the side tonight. What are the reasons for that? We have three players that is missing through for injuries. They're all minor, but Kim Little, Leah Belty and Jen Beatty uh, is, is not available to be in the matchday squad. Uh, so that gives opportunities for, for other players. Beth, a big experience in, in Kim Little not being there. How much of a hole is that for Arsenal? Yeah, I think it's a big loss for them. She's been their playmaker and holding person in that midfield that drives the team forward and her experience and leadership on the pitch is a huge element that Arsenal need in that team and hopefully they're going to be able to fill that void but I think it will be a tough ask. Well he's kind of sort of done that with Kyra Cooney Cross bringing her in during the cup during the, the week and, and then she gets that start. Yeah look this is massive for Arsenal it really is she's a player who I know and I've seen her play a lot and I know that she has got a massive future ahead of her she is the complete midfielder for me the way that she plays i think the intensity that she plays with the ball at her feet is unlike many others in the game i think leah walty obviously brings that stability but cooney cross coming into the team having those the likes of leah walty and kim little and freedom on them to learn from as a midfielder but for me kyra cooney cross coming into this team is a big opportunity for her to show what she's about mm. um, and I think if she can play a single pivot role as a number six I think that's where she's at her best because she can really start dictating play and Jonas speaks very highly of her it's a big night for her he's now got Mead Meadema on the bench as well the changes that this Arsenal team can make do you think that's going to stand them in good stead for this match in, in particular Definitely. I mean, I think the last thing Leicester want is to see Beth Mead or Viv coming on the pitch. We all know what excellence they can bring, no matter how long they've been out. So it'll be interesting to see if they play a part in this game and what they'll be able to produce. One slight concern, they've had no clean sheet, what, in the last seven matches, Arsenal? They, for me, at the back, they've lacked stability in terms of personnel. They've rotated a lot and that's some, some of that's come from availability of players. But I think uh, Jonas Eideval is still trying to figure out his best back four and he's, he's got plenty of good options. Uh, I was about to just say in words that we have Bethany England here tonight, which I have just said, but you can ask her a question. They'll be better than mine, not better than Izzy's. <laughs> if you want to get in touch, go to at Sky Sports WSL on X. Ask Bethany, use the hashtag questions for Beth after this one tonight. And we're going to go through some of her best goals. Didn't know that was coming. A lot of analysis <laughs> to come later on. But our focus, though, is on Leicester against Arsenal this evening. We've got a couple of attacking options in the studio. So we're going to even it up now. Laura Bassett, former England defender, is going to be alongside Peen Mullenstein in just a moment for this one. So we see both teams lining up in the tunnel. Quick word, uh, Katie McKay there. I saw a presentation with Ian Wright with her during the week as well. There's a leader if you've got the oh. likes of Kim Little not there. We've seen it this season, specifically against Bristol, just taking you know, taking the game by the scuff for the next. She's one of those players, she thrives off it. And yeah, she's, she's had a fantastic career so far at Arsenal. Wonderful player to watch. Right, here they go. Let's get to Peen then and Laura Bassett. Thank you very much, Caroline. Good evening, everyone. Well, King Power Stadium shines brightly under the lights here as the two teams make their way out on this Remembrance Sunday evening. Well, Leicester City have enjoyed the best ever start to a top flight season so far, but their luck may have run out after suffering back-to-back -back defeats in the last two games. After their worst start to a WSL season in five years, Arsenal have settled steadily into the season and arrive here having won the last three top flight matches with a midweek cup win in the mix too. Tonight, the Foxes go on the hunt for their first ever goal and points against Arsenal in the Women's Super League. And so a chance to tell you about the team that will take on that challenge, starting with Leicester City, who've had a week to improve from their loss at Liverpool, and Willie Coat makes two changes to his side. Janina Leipzig has made the most saves in the league since her debut in January. 
We're expecting Julie Thibault to move into defence to replace Josie Green, who drops to the bench. Sophie Howard has played every game, every minute for Leicester this season. The change in midfield sees Janice Kaiman returns the 11 alongside Leicester's joint top scorer, Jutta Rantala and Sam Tierney. Deanne Rose makes her first start for Leicester, while Hannah Kane makes her 50th Women's Super League appearance. So Missy Goodwin and Josie Green drop to the bench, whilst 18-year-old Jess Reveal is included in the squad for the first time this season. For Arsenal, there were plenty of changes in midweek for their cup win over Bristol City. Only four of those who started on Thursday keep their place today. Manuela Zinsberger returns to goal after a rest in midweek. Lotto Bowman Moy and Katie McKay both started in the cup on Thursday, while Amanda Ilstead and Steph Catley return to the Arsenal defence. Kyra Cooney Cross makes her first start in the WSL for Arsenal tonight, alongside Victoria Pullover and Frida Leonardson Mornham, who scored her first goal of the season last time out. To lead the line tonight, Caitlin Ford and Chloe Lacasse join Lalassia Russo, who scored more goals against Leicester than any other team. Well, Beth Mead and Viviana Miedemar are both on the bench, but there's no Kim Little, Leah Velti, or Jen Beattie who are all injured. Well, on this Remembrance Sunday, the last post will shortly be played with a moment's silence to follow to commemorate the sacrifices of service personnel in conflict, past and present. Post played by Bugler, Paul Hing. Well, a chance, Laura, for you to have a look at some key players, some key attacking threats, perhaps, for the teams playing today. Yeah, for Arsenal, Chloe Lacasse. I think you know, she's Canadian. We saw how dangerous she is. She got October goal of the month, so she's a constant threat. And also, she reads the game so well out of possession. And we saw that last week against Man City winning, you know, a penalty for her team. She's really dangerous, got a key role tonight. And then her other Canadian counterpart, Diane Rose, first start in the WSL, so it's a huge opportunity to her. How can she, you know, really drive this Leicester team forward she needs to gonna need to link up with Peterman really well going forward but then in defense she's gonna have to protect CJ Bott again, you know and double up against Caitlin Ford because she's such a threat too well Stacey Felix is the referee this evening well the two teams ready and raring to go it's two teams who are coming into this one in contrasting form really to defeats on the bounce for Leicester City. As for Arsenal, they certainly have started to find their form after a little bit of a wobble at the start of the season. They come into this one, three victories in the WSL in a row. And have a chance to climb further and further up the WSL table with a victory tonight. Leicester City stand in their way. And ahead of kickoff, the players take the knee 
as a reminder that there is no room for racism or discrimination. Well, here we go then. Leicester looking to get back on track, but they face an Arsenal side, Laura, who have found their form and are showing no signs of stopping. Well, exactly, and that result last week against Man City, 2-1 win at home, you know, it was huge, it was such a cagey performance, but that, that just gives you confidence, the awe of arrogance that you need, and that swag to really drive forward now with performances and results. Arsenal are missing a couple of key players in this game, Kim Little being one of the names that wasn't part of the team sheet this evening. Having all minor injuries. Here is Catley. Stopped in the tracks by Diane Rose. There were question marks about whether she might be starting on the right or the left. It is on the right-hand side, Diane Rose. There is Jonas Edeval, the Arsenal manager, who today takes charge of his 50th top-flight game. Now Rose. Catley. She absolutely loves playing against Leicester, Alessia Russo. She scored more goals against Leicester than any other team. She'll be hoping to be off the mark again. Here's Rose who holds on and gets away from Cooney Cross. Leicester powering forward, looking to come forward in their numbers. Diane Rose couldn't quite get there, and Arsenal have it back in their possession. Well, that's an early sign, isn't it, of how dangerous Diane Rose can be. She's got the pace and power and tenacity to get past people, to get past Crooney Cross in midfield and drive forward. Well, it's her first start today for Leicester this season. She's the one as a substitute in all the other five WSL games, Diane Rose, but awarded with her first start by her manager, Willie Kirk. And there is Lotta Bubba Moy. And across to Illistead. Here is Sophie Howard. And to Leipzig, who has had really impressive stats. Janina Leipzig, the goalkeeper for Leicester City since joining them in January. Now a chance for Leicester to come forward again. Kleinman couldn't quite find the feet of Diane Rose, weren't on the same page really. Yeah, we've just seen a couple of unforced errors, haven't we, of Leicester in possession. You know, they've, they've started OK, they've had plenty of ball, but you just need to keep it. Get those short passes, be composed, make sure you keep the next pass. Commentators cursed, came, came and passing it out of play again. There is Willie Kirk, who, as you can see, October's WSL Manager of the Month. And he did mention after getting that award that it was just testament to how much Leicester have improved. Zinsberger. McCabe. I thought she could pick out four, but it was very quickly pounced upon. She has to go from distance. It did take her deflection. This Kleiman already showing what kind of threat she can pose. Yeah, sloppy ball from McCabe trying to switch play, but good read from CJ Bott stepping in. She's again, she thinks attack minded, wants to get the ball out of her feet. And that's what Diamond's there for. Have a shot, create havoc, pick up some really good positions centrally. So, first corner for Leicester. Early on, there are plenty of players who are willing to get on the end of this to try and get an early lead. He's there and just about cleared away. Now Janice Kaiman, one of the two changes for Leicester City tonight. She's actually part of the Lyon team that played against Arsenal last season in the Champions League. Now 
over. Over forward to Leonard and Warnham. Looking to try and find Ford, but it was quickly taken away in the end by Thibault. It was picked up again by Leonard and Warnham, and it needed the right block, and Thibault was there. Thibault does so well in the first instance. She reads, she's got a body shape well, she knows she hasn't turned her back on it. She's intercepted the ball, but then that, that, that next pass have to keep the ball. So again, it's just that little bit of concentration. And he crossed with the corner delivery and it very nearly tested the Leicester City goalkeeper, Janina Leitzig. How important has she been since she signed for Leicester? Laura? There's a few things, isn't there? Um, you know, what Willie Kirk spoke about, what the infrastructure that he's put in place behind the scenes, but also it's some of the signings. Leipzig since January has been tremendous. And with game on game upon game, we've just seen improvements. She's now against other teams playing higher up, playing out more with her, with her feet. You know, she just keeps adding different dimensions to her game. So she's been imperative and but the stats speak for themselves. You know, then when you're playing these top teams, when the WSL is so competitive, you need her to make big saves. Saves she ranks first, again, which then the knock-on effect, clean sheets, XG prevented. It all just have an X, you know, the, the knock-on effect. Here come Arsenal as Leicester have given it away again, and they look to take advantage. Caitlin Ford. Catley was making herself available down the left. Here's Cooney Cross. Forced back to Bullen Moy. Arsenal looking to gain a bit of control in this game early on. Listed, just assessing her options ahead of her. Alessia Russo. Wubamoy. Ford trying to find Catley. Take a little bit of a deflection there from CJ Borden. We'll go out for a throw. Early pressure from Arsenal. Who themselves are looking to keep the pressure on Chelsea in the league table. Cooney Cross finds Ford. Looks to weave a way through to try and find a goal scoring opportunity. The referee spotted. Kyra Cooney Cross was caught. She does well, Cooney Cross, to disguise the pass, but Kaiman, you can see, is late. Gets the afters there. The ball's already gone. So Catley and Cooney Cross, the two who are ready to take this free kick for Arsenal. It will be Cooney Cross who plays it into a dangerous looking ball. It's a good ball as well, and it bounced away from Leipzig, and eventually Leicester deal with it. But it looked nervy for Leicester. Yeah, it did. Cooney Cross has found her range. She just had a corner, and then she had that wide free kick. Really good, deep delivery. And again, really good connection. And Leipzig, you know, you'd expect her to keep hold of that. But it's a really good reaction on the second phase, isn't it? Alessia Russo does well, beats it, her opponent to the ball. But then here to make that second save. Well, the first real good opportunity for Arsenal. They've uh, got themselves a corner from it. And it's crowded in that. Area surrounded Leipzig and eventually Leicester can clear it away. Looking for Rose, who's alone and has space to run into as well. Need to try and get away from Pelova. Catley was coming back to help her teammates out. And McCabe, oh, she hurt herself as Diane Rose was able to get away. I think the referees made a really good decision there. I don't think there's a lot in there. You're both vying for the right position, vying to control the ball. And Peterman is down for Leicester and Arsenal have the ball back in their possession.
certainly has had a good energy the start of this game so far. You can tell both teams that Dessa to try and gain control of it. There's Leonard and Mornham. Over to Ford. And to try and weave away into the penalty area. Ford keeps going. Left by McCabe and it's picked up by Peterman. But Ivo to Leipzig. Nastia Russo was putting the pressure on. Now it's Lacasse's turn to do the same. Really good pressure from Arsenal, especially Lacasse, because as soon as Leicester start to play out from the back, you know, Courtney Nevin comes into that centre midfield alongside Tierney. So all of a sudden, Sophie Howe's not really got a, play, a position to go to. That's when Chloe Lacasse re recognises that she can really put some good pressure. So Marnham looking to play it forward and now a chance for Weber coming through and just hit the side netting. Oliver reads the game so well. Any ball that's knocking down that's spare, she reads it so well and then that's in perfect shooting distance, isn't it? That's so close. Really good effort. Well, it was inches away and I'm pretty sure the Arsenal fans who were sat in the right-hand corner across would probably have thought that that had gone into the back of the net. Tenny across to Rose. And to play it on. The cave had it covered. Anna Kane was making her way through on the left side. Looking to fire it across and there we nearly found the head there of Kaiman. It's really good play, isn't it? Much better composed play. Look at really dangerous ball. They've got three bodies in the box. Kaiman just throws herself at it. She has a pirouette in the air. It's really hard to get direction on the ball when you haven't got stability in the air. But again, both teams do look threatening when they get into that final third. I'd say after 12 minutes, no one's really got fully control of this game yet. Will there be an element from Leicester, Laura, that they want to take Arsenal by surprise early on? I, I think so, but I think Arsenal um, will be expecting, you know, Leicester to be very up for it. When they've played Manchester United, when they've played um, Manchester City, you know, they don't like to go player for player, very high press. You know, they don't sit back and are fearful and bank up. You know, they want to match you. They want to take a step forward. They want to be competitive. Give it away and Tierney looking to place it across and it was... Just about lucky for Arsenal, who had enough players in the box to defend against that. Now Kaiman. Back to Rose. And Leicester looking relentless in their attack at the moment. Deanne Rose, who certainly made a lively start to this game. Vuba Moy, you'd for her standards, her expectation, you'd expect to find a red shirt, at least get the ball higher with a bit more distance, just causing unnecessary pressure on yourselves. And Howard with the header forward again, looking to find Deanne Rose, who will chase this down and try and get it away from Catley. Ford, Arsenal struggling really at the moment. This Leicester pressure is causing them problems and making them make mistakes. Pelova looking to break free. Russo. Kaiman with the pressure. Didn't allow Russo to make the pass that she wanted. Well, there is Serena Wichmann watching on. So sure she will be keeping a close eye on her. Lioness is in action. Howard. Tala, 
taken. It's up by Thibaut. Kane is driving at this Arsenal defence now, looking to find a way through. Rantala collects. And across, and Catley got a touch too, and it will be a corner for Leicester. Look at Kane, she's tenacious, she goes forward, she goes at players, she doesn't back off, doesn't take the easy option, and Rantala does so well. I don't think Deanne Roy, Rose and Kane like, really expect the ball to come across, but it flashes across that six-yard box. She does so well to get the ball in. Well, Courtney Nevin is ready to take this Leicester corner, and it's Leicester who in the last five minutes or so have been really putting the pressure on Arsenal to try and get an early lead in this game. Nevin with a delivery. He had a good one, and it was in a good area as well. Arsenal able to deal with it. Rantala, out to Nevin, Nevin again, this is good play from Leicester, oh, almost filled there by Zinsberger and it's Arsenal who can collect it, but Leicester looking the most likely to score at the moment, Laura. Kane. a really good spell isn't it Courtney Nevin at Lacastet's done on a one-two but this ball's good Zinsberger comes out and you can see the, the clash Hannah Kane's not happy is she you can see Hannah Kane in the middle of the box look you can just see that block that elbow but really prevents her getting to the ball she's not happy but the refs Wave play on. Well, it's now Amanda Ilsted who is down for Arsenal and getting some treatment. So, has given the managers a bit of time to chat to their players. And it certainly has been Leicester that have seemed the more in control in the opening 17, 18 minutes of this game. Yeah, especially when they got asked, get Arsenal in their own half. That allows them to step forward. It allows them to go player for player. It allows them to be get up to the ball, be really aggressive and pin them in there. And then because Arsenal maybe have, or haven't got Leo Volti, Kim Little in there, you know, you who are you so, so good at receiving the ball under pressure, it's just maybe find them a different way, different way to solve the pressure that Leicester are putting on. Well, this little break does give me an opportunity to tell you that Arsenal are back in action again next Sunday in the WSL. It's Brighton who host Arsenal coverage from 1 o'clock on Sky Sports Football. And then following that, her former team, Manchester United against Manchester City, the Manchester derby in the WSL next Sunday from 4 o'clock on Sky Sports Football. I'm sure you will have a close eye on that one as well, Laura. <laughs> I have a close eye on all the games, team. <laughs> Amanda Ilsted, looks like she'll be okay. Well, it certainly will be Arsenal and Chelsea will be keeping their eye on that Manchester derby, especially because it's so close. At the top of the WSL table at the moment, plenty of teams really pushing each other in terms of points. It's an opportunity for Arsenal to climb up the table as well, all the way up to second if they get three points here this evening. Leicester could go joint level on points with Arsenal if they get three points. So it certainly has been an exciting start to the WSL season so far. Better play from Arsenal, isn't it? Getting Alessia Russo involved, she's so good. Back to goal, holding the ball up, manoeuvring left and right, bringing other players in. Cooney Cross, the two. And it's Cooney Cross who will take it, and Howard looking to head it away. Still alive, the chance though for Arsenal, and eventually seen away there by Kaiman.
Cooney Cross is really finding her range and it's some really good quality deliveries into the box and Sophie Howard does well to defend that. Whether it's a head, shoulder, bit of both. She'll certainly put her body on the line to protect a goal. Howard. Martin Marnham. Cass finds Leonardo Marnham again. Right on the edge of that penalty area. They edge closer, Arsenal. Yes, Russo is making herself available as well, right in front of goal. They will go out for an Arsenal corner. Energetic start from both sides, but who will be able to take advantage? Arsenal with an opportunity now, and it's Catley with the corner delivery. Added away by Howard again. Cooney Cross being put under pressure this time by Bott. Now to McCabe. This time bounce com comfortably into the hands of Leipzig. When you look at the last couple of results from Leicester, who had made their best start to a WSL season, but they seemed to fall off a little bit in the last couple of games, two defeats on the bounce, but they weren't big defeats at all. They were narrow defeats. Their last game against Liverpool, they lost 2-1. Manchester City, only a 1-0 defeat as well. So. There was not too much cause for concern, Laura. No, exactly. And, and, and sometimes, especially the last game, I think Willie Kirk spoke about how disappointed he was about the performance. You know, players really didn't step up, didn't take the opportunity. But, you know, they just keep building. They're getting to know the identity. They're getting to know when players are going to move in field, getting to know their style. And, you know, sometimes with such a young team, with young players, you know, you do get that little bit of inconsistency that you have to be patient with. CJ Bott. Tierney forward looking for Deanne Rose, who just missed it, and it's Wubba Moy who gets hold of it for Arsenal. Catley. Peterman's such a good focal point, focal centre striker up there, you know, just showing then that you, the defenders can't rest, they can't rest on their laurels, they can't assume that the ball's going to roll out. She's lively, she's onto it, she's reading the game, she's sussing and sensing any danger. Any first ball, second ball pickup that she can really make use of. Cooney Cross finds a space there for McCabe, who will chase it down. Has La Casa ahead of it. Well stopped, though, by Kane, who came all the way back. Here's Russo. Leonardo Mornham. Tierney wins the possession back for Leicester. Given away though, Pulova. There's Peterman, who's come all the way back to try and help her teammates out. And looking to get away from McCabe. Quite an interesting battle between the two, isn't it? McCabe and Hannah Kane down yep. that left side. Yeah, it certainly is. They were both tenacious. You can see each player not wanting to get the, not allowing the other player to get the upper hand on them. But they're so important for their respective teams. Over Moy, Hillestead. Howard got there ahead of Russo. 
Catley forced back to her keeper, Zinsberger. Never wins it, and now Russo takes it, but Thibaut was right ahead of it and read it well. Tierney. There's a fire it across to Kane, who has it for Leicester. And just couldn't quite control it the way she wanted, which took the pace away from it and the momentum from Leicester. Yeah, that's the key word, Pien. It stopped the momentum of the attack, didn't it? But Thibaut, you know, at the back, she just shepherded Alessia Russo, you know, away from goal, collected the ball. And then it's the composure that I like from the back, you know. She's not happy just to clear the ball into an area. She wants to play, wants to play into midfield. You know, that adds such a calmness and puts a calmness throughout the team. Howard. Angelo back to Nevin. Tierney across to Howard. Leipzig. Oh, looking to try and find a bit of space, but it wasn't quite the pass that they would have hoped for. No, I think we've seen that op open up a few times for Sophie Howard, you know, because Courtney Nevins come in midfield next to Tierney, she has to, she again gets forced to play the ball down the line. And that's when her technique on her non-preferred fo foot needs to be really accurate. Well, she certainly has been an important player for Leicester over the season. She's played every single minute of this season so far, the only player to do so. Space opening up now for Caitlin Ford, who fires it over. Very nearly an opening for Arsenal. What a chance that could have been for Caitlin Ford. But brilliant defensive work from Leicester to deny Arsenal an opener. It's the pace of... Chloe Lacasse's ball that I like here, gets there, gets to Caitlin Ford quickly so she can make a decision. But CJ Bott gets there just in time, great emergency defending. Arsenal go again, Catley. Cooney Cross looking to get away from Rantala. Another challenge in just to take the... Momentum away from Cooney Cross, who is looking for another chance for Arsenal. Catley. Russo both looking to reach it, kept alive. Here's Pulova. Being put under pressure again by CJ Bott. Pulova keeps it in. Catley across. Need to try and find Ford, but they've won it back now, Leicester, and now a chance to come forward. Referee says play on. McCabe wins the ball back for Arsenal. Being Arsene Mornham. Catley's making her way through as well, but the flag is up against her and she held a run already. I think the play, McCabe does so well here just to wrestle CJ Bott off the ball. That's close, isn't it? I think more Leonardo to Mornham's onside. But again, in those transition moments, Arsenal have to be better. The calibre of players that they have, they really need to make them count, but obviously that probably should have been onside in the play on. Well, that was perhaps the best chance that Arsenal have had so far in this game from Caitlin Ford. But a brilliant bit of defensive work there from CJ Bott to deny an opener for Arsenal.
can see Arsenal have had more touches in the opponent's box. But just the way that Leicester have defended, they look like a team and individuals that enjoy defending, they enjoy winning the ball back, enjoy putting their body on the line. Over, over to Lacasse. They tried to turn and get ahead, but Howard was able to get there for Leicester. And right by Tierney. Arsenal who have the bragging rights in this fixture they've won every WSL meeting against Leicester a combined scoreline of 14 nil Leicester not only on the hunt for the first ever points against Arsenal their first ever goal as well and they've won it back now Arsenal here's a chance for Loba to try and get it over and she's missed it twice narrowly wide by Palova Poor decision by Leipzig, isn't it? But Pullover reads it well, and it just opens up. Leipzig gets caught in, in no man's land. She doesn't know whether to come to the ball or carry on or retreat. But Pullover here, it's all about in the execution. It's opened up. She has time to bring it onto her left foot, which we know she's dazzling with her left foot. She can't believe it, nor can we. Well, Victoria Pullover twice had an opportunity to put Arsenal in the lead, twice. She's narrowly missed, but that possibly the best chance Arsenal have had. And will they come to regret that? She hasn't scored yet this season, Victoria Pullova. Well, her, her evolution's been really interesting. Last season, we saw her come into games from the wide channels in the wide areas, but this season, she's really cemented that place in centre midfield, dictating play, especially on the ball, you know, in central areas, creating things. She likes to turn face forward. She's such a highly technical player. Run, tell her. Well, the Moy puts it away from Peterman, who's trying to put the pressure on. And my well, Moy holds on to it. Illustead. <laughs> Russo up against Howard. And it will go Arsenal's way. Well, Arsenal thought they could take advantage, but look at this opportunity to try and take the lead. Just try to dink it over the Leicester goalkeeper, Leipzig, and Pullover. Couldn't find the target. She couldn't believe it. We couldn't believe it. <laughs> Here is Kane for Leicester. She's got Rose alongside her. Rose! Very nearly got there, and it's Woman Moore who got in the way. We've seen some great emergency defending tonight, aren't we? Woman Moy, that's excellent to stay that switched on, but look at this. McCain doesn't quite get her body right. Kane beats her for pace, gets ahead. I'm thinking she's shooting. She does see Deanne Rose. I'm thinking she's shooting straight away. Bottom corners. But again, unselfishly passes to Deanne Rose, but Wuba Moy, that's excellent. Well, Wuba Moy in the right place at the right time. Thought it might have been a corner, probably should have been. But still less to put the pressure on, and this is Nevis. Trying to get away from Illustead. And this time they do get the corner. She 
as well. Gets round McCabe. But look at this, moving boy, and just so well to tow it, because that could easily be an own goal. You're facing your own goal, it's easy just to tap it in. And look, you see spuming that it's not an own goal. A, sorry, a corner, <laughs> or an own goal. A corner delivery there. That's a man firing it forward, and he's got it! Tierney! Right place at the right time! And Leicester have the lead! A really good ball, isn't it? Deep. But Peter Munch is unmarked, gets that free header. Again, Tierney just comes off the line. Boobin Moyes too late to it. Again, another free, two free contacts in your 18-yard box. Too easy. But again, Leicester, right place, right time, aggressive, determined. That's too easy, that's a free header, but well done, Peterman. And again, easy nod in for Tierney. Well, Arsenal may have had their chances, but it's Leicester who have taken theirs. 1-0, Sam Tierney, the captain, who scores. Her first goal of the season, and how important that could be as well. The first goal that Leicester have scored against Arsenal just before the break as well. It may have come at the perfect time. I think Arsenal have looked dangerous from set pieces. If you would have asked me, I would have said it was Arsenal that were really going to prove a point from set pieces, but all credit to Leicester there. Here's Leonardo Monum, who holds on, gets away from Thibaut. Monum takes it! And straight into the hands of Leipzig. Well, end to end at the moment. Leonardo Mornham does well. She's got an option left to right, but again decides to take the shot herself. But that's easy for Leipzig. Good pick up. Peterman finds Kane. They've got confidence now. Leicester here's a chance to two, and they've got it as well. Kaiman this time with the important touch. Leicester loving it at the moment. Two goals in quick succession. You can see Willie Kirk there saying, calm down, calm down, but these girls are on fire. Leicester just want to keep playing. Look at this. Down Leicester's left-hand side again, too easy, give and go. Peterman stays on the ball. Hannah Kane finds herself in between. McCabe and the pace of this ball. The pace of this ball gives Kaiman absolutely just a tap in. Great left-footed cross. There you go, just put it in. Has a good look up, composes herself. The pace on the ball is good enough to beat Vuvan Moy. There you go, Kaiman. You've done well to get yourself into the box, put that ball away. Well, she's been lively in this game, and Janice Kaiman with her first goal for Leicester puts them 2-0 ahead. Not even a minute from when they scored their first from the restart to their second. Leicester in control of this game. Well, you could see Willie Kirk, the Leicester manager, saying, keep calm. Jonas Edeval, his face was in complete shock. Well, and in that 54 seconds, Leonard Samornan had a shot that could have easily been a goal on a different day. Peterman was just caught there on a hand from Wubba Moy. Well, let's have a look at this again. Well, it is. Here you go. The space in front of Kane. Give her the ball. Give her to something to run onto. But that's such... She, she's right-footed. That's a non-preferred foot. But the pace of that left-footed cross. Keep it low. And like I say, Kaimers does so well. Get yourself into the box. Cause havoc. And again, she's still got to have good connection to get it goal-bound. Well, they have to try and find their way back into this game, Arsenal. And there is Viviana Miedema on the bench today. You can see the frustration for her. There is Beth Mead as well, also on the bench, both available to come on if they need to. Because it is Leicester 
who have taken the lead in quick succession. And basically, the story is they've taken the chances when they were presented them. Well, exactly, and that's what Leicester know. These players know you'll have to work so hard defensively and offensively. And then when you get your chances, when you get into that final third, you better be good, you better be clinical. And they certainly have been. Look at this. Good first contact, aggressive to the second contact goal. Really good ball in, good pace. There you go, first time finish. First time finishes are so hard to defend against. Lena Peterman still getting treatment on that right hand after she was caught. Well, she is uh, Leicester's, one of Leicester's joint top goal scorers this season, two goals in the WSL. So play can continue. Oh, the Pittman still getting treatment on that hand. Here is Willemoy. And forward. And back though by. CJ Bottom, Tierney forced it back to Leipzig. Well, a little bit uncharacteristic, really, for Leicester to score two goals in the first half of the game. They've only scored one WSL goal before this in the first half. So uh, a little bit of an improvement in terms of attacking the game early on. Lena Peterman is back on. Spot. Hannah Kane was screaming for it because she had a bit of space on that left-hand side. And it's Catley who had it covered for Arsenal at the back. Kane's got every right to shout for it. Switch the ball, give it to Kane in them spaces. She's causing so much trouble up against McCabe down that left-hand side. Peterman. Bot and try and get away from Ford and does well. Here is Peterman again for Leicester. Trying to put it back, and it was Pilova who was in the way this time. Will be a corner. These Leicester players just love dueling, don't they? Look, attacking duel. I'm gonna get by ya, and now I'm gonna pick someone out. I'm not it's not good enough just to get into areas. And again, Peterman just unlucky there. Look, she knows what she's aiming for. Pull back. Well, Leicester have confidence. Nevin will take this corner. Looking for another good delivery. Pitterman was aimed for, but couldn't quite find it. I'm expecting quite a big chunk of time, really, to be added on at the, uh, at the end of this first half. Here is Lacasse, who's charging at this lesser defence now. Once again, and in the end, it was well defended, really, by CJ Bott, who just took the pace away from it. Rose. That's a glimpse of how dangerous Lacasse is, though. You know, running 60, 70 yards. But then it's just getting your head up, having that final execution, picking the right option. So into seven minutes added time in this first half. Well, it has been a really good performance from Leicester, despite there being quite a few chances created by Arsenal. 
The scoreline could have so easily been different. Ehlerstedt. by Bott. Cutley struggling to try and find a player that's in space. And she went for Russo. Antela over to Rose. And this is Kaiman. Had to switch it across to Anna Kane, who is in space on that left side, looking to get away from McKay, but well, was ambitious. Kaiman showing all her experience. Look at this nudge on Cooney Cross. Look, there you go, nudge, I'm going to use my weight. Then I know where I want the ball. I'm going to switch it straight away. Give it to the player of the moment, Hannah Kane. And again, you can see Courtney Nevin busting a gut from left back to get in, having a race with Chloe Lacasse. Just a poor decision on that one. And there's Russo who's trying to muscle Howard there, but wins the foul. Last year, Russo's been so tightly marked if it's not by Howard. It's by Tebow tonight. She's having to use her strength, her power. She's so tightly marked. <laughs> Catley. Arsenal searching for a way back into this game before the break. And Kane was held back there by Pullover. You can just see Pullover, you can't get away with that, a pull back. But I must say, before that, when the free kick come in, Sophie Howard's been immense in her 18-yard box. I think she's got a head of first contact onto everything that Arsenal have put in the air. to Cooney Cross. Another free kick for Arsenal. This time it will be a yellow card as well for Ham Tierney. Oh, it's gone down for Dennis Kaiman instead the yellow card. This is what happened. It's the first time that we've seen Cooney Cross really drive with power and pace centrally. There is Tierney. I'm looking to force it forward and it's Hyman, who will try and chase it down, will be more to it quickly, Zinsberger. Leonard and Warnham over to Cooney Cross. Russo. Lacasse has Pullover ahead of her. This is Pullover. And they fired across, but Nevin read it well. Here is Pullover again. Russo, horse back to Cooney Cross. Off 
board. Hoping to find the feet of Russo. A goal before the break for Arsenal may just give them that glimmer of hope ahead of the second half. Well, there will be another yellow card shown there. Well, it's good consistency, isn't it, from the referee? You've just seen Kaiman do the same, and Chloe Lucas knew exactly what she was doing, stopping the break. So Chloe Lucas on a yellow card after that challenge. Nevin, and the delivery, I'm searching for Kaiman. Back out to Nevin again. Bot. Rantala couldn't keep hold of it. It's Tierney who got a touch to it. Time whistle. Well, Victoria Pulova had two opportunities really to fire Arsenal in the lead. She couldn't take them, but Lester could, starting with Sam Tierney, who was in the right place at the right time to open the scoring. And then two minutes later, Janice Kaiman got the important touch to make it 2-0. The half-time score then, Leicester 2, Arsenal 0. Evening everyone, Leicester City 2, Arsenal nil at half time. Izzy Christensen here with Bethany England. Izzy, it could have been oh so different for Arsenal. Well, firstly, what a game. What a game, but this is the first chance for Arsenal. Pullover in the middle of the pitch, jumps, wins the ball, and this is an absolutely super opportunity. She's gone for the audacious dink over the goalkeeper. I can see what she's trying to do, but we've got Beth England here. Top striker, and what are you saying in that situation, Beth? I'm saying if I'm Leicester <laughs> Russo, I'm wanting that square. You've got a goalkeeper and a defender charging out at you, square pass, and it's just a tap in, 1 0 up, and it settles the nerves for Arsenal. So for me, if I'm less, I'm, I'm wanting that ball. We show that because that's 32nd minute, then flip forward to the 36th minute, and then your mate does this. Yeah. Yeah, look, I think Petterman's done a great job of losing less, the marker, and then you've got um, Caitlin Ford at the back post switched off again lost a marker and it's an easy header in the back post first to react from Sam and it's a great time to just get the 1-0 up first yeah say about Sam Tierney it's been a while since you last played with her but she's knocking the, the goals in from 1-0 then 2-0 something like 45 seconds later yeah again this is excellent from Leicester we spoke about them pre-game about the way that they're brave in possession they're looking to build and what I love about this clip is watch Peterman again she seems to be at the centre of everything that Leicester are doing. She's dropped deep. And then Janice came in in the middle of the two centre-backs. She turns on the afterburners at this point, slides. And I know, played with her at Lyon, and her commitment to run into the box, she's unstoppable. And she's the most advanced player in this situation. The ball across from Hannah Kane is absolutely perfect. Real desire to score the goal. And Leicester fully deserved 2-0 up. Absolutely brilliant performance so far. The question is, can they maintain it? It was actually 54 seconds, that's all on me. Um, but Beth, are you surprised by this score? I am, yeah. Like I said, I think Arsenal have had a good few chances to go ahead early doors. I think there's been a couple of chances where, again, they could have been squared and easy tap-ins. And look, it's a game of football and Leicester's taken their opportunities well. And I think we've seen in that last clip, Hannah put a great ball across the box there to get in, in for the second goal. But th that's been coming. She's had some great success down that left-hand side and there could have been two or three more goals up by now. Hey, it's a good game. Yeah. Glad you came in for it. Uh, plenty more goals to come, maybe. Leicester, though, don't concede at home. Just six they've conceded in the last year in 2023. You wait for one goal and two goals come along at once. Two up at the break. Beth, let's give 
Leicester credit for what they did in that first half. But for Arsenal, how can they break them down? What, what do you think they'll have to do in the second 45? I think they're going to have to find some sort of brilliance from somewhere. I think this Leicester squad are playing very well today, but you have seen at times Leicester are turning the ball over in high areas, in and around the box, hence the pull over chance. And I think if Arsenal can keep that high pressure and make the correct decisions in front of goal, more opportunities will come. Yeah, easier said than done, Izzy, to make those correct decisions, but they do have those weapons on the bench that we've spoken about in Beth Mead and Viv Miedemar. Yeah, I mean, from Leicester's perspective, it's, it's about no risk now no risks play pragmatically play intelligently and, and yeah from Arsenal's perspective they have got um, firepower on the bench in, in Miedemar and Beth Mead notably but I think more of the same for Leicester. We see Missy Goodwin waiting to come on we believe Deanne Rose is coming off I mean Deanne Rose was causing problems in that that first 45 minutes I don't know whether this is, is tactical or she's got a, a little knock. I've no idea, but yeah, I think you're right. She was causing problems. I think she probably could have had a bit more of the instinct of getting in the box a bit quicker. As I said in the from previous, that Hannah Kane was putting some great balls in the box. And I think if you're going to score more goals against teams like this, you need to get willing runners in the box and on the back post. All right, Leicester two up. They've never beaten Arsenal in the WSL. Hadn't even scored against them. They've done that first part of the job. Can they hang on in the second 45? Back to Laura Bassett alongside Pien Willenstein. Thank you very much, Caroline. Well, what drama we had in the first half. What will we get in the second 45? Certainly an exciting 45 minutes to come. And you can see there Leicester already making a change at half time. We'll have to wait to see if this is tactical or whether uh, Deanne Rose did get a little bit of a knock in that first 45 minutes because here is the change. Missy Goodwin will be replacing Deanne Rose. And I suppose we didn't really expect Deanne Rose to be making her way off at the end of that 45, the first 45. No, that's it. You never know kind of what niggles she's carrying or, or any illness or anything. We don't, we're not privy to that information, but certainly this girl coming on, Missy Goodwin, 20 years of age. You know, she scored, scored an incredible goal against Liverpool last week. So they're certainly not taking away any of their firepower. Um, and she's certainly got the athletic ability again to get up and down exactly like what Diam Rose did in the first half. Well, both teams ready and raring to go for this second half. It certainly will be Leicester who will be feeling more confident coming into this second half compared to Arsenal, who know they've got it all to do to try and get themselves back into this game. 2-0 down after two Leicester City goals in the first half. What will the Arsenal reaction be? Well, they certainly have plenty of options on the bench as well if they need them. Of course, Viviana Miedemar and Beth, and Beth Mead both getting back to full fitness after being out for such a long time. The final checks and away we go for the second half and it's Arsenal who get us back underway. Lot of Moy looking to place it early on for Lacasse to try and get the attack on. Here's Russo, finds Lacasse again. And firing forward in numbers, Arsenal. And you can really see a statement of intent perhaps from Jonas Adebel's side who had to come out really firing in the second half, Laura. Yeah, I'm sure there would have been words and solutions made at half time. And, you know, to give this set of 11 players the chance to rectify it, to get back in the game and really to go forward with attacking intent and prove that, you know, they are worthy of getting back into this game before we look to the bench. Well, there certainly was the face of shock on the fa on uh, Jonas Edevald after Leicester. City scored their second goal in such quick succession. Less than a minute since the restart from their first goal, they got the second goal. And there is Beth Mead getting ready, warming up. Will she be making an appearance in this second half? Hard with a clearance away for Leicester. Hillestedt. Bubba Moy. Here's Ford. We're already seeing Steph Catley a lot higher, a lot quicker in advance. We didn't really see her joining in the first half. Overlapping, underlapping, how dynamic she normally is in games. And similarly, McCabe on the other side. You know, there's such pivotal players in how this Arsenal team play.
There's Kane. Angela couldn't quit. Keep hold of the possession for Leicester. And he tries to win it back, but it's Arsenal and Lacasse. And the referee says play on. Good win. Zinsberger, back out to Bielestead, but Leicester had uh, two opportunities and they took them. Wasn't quite the same story for Arsenal in the first half, Laura, where they had chances, they had opportunities, but they just couldn't take them. Is it looking like it's just going to be one of those days as Leicester come forward with Rantler and now Peterman? Here's Kane, finds Rantler again. Quickly collected this time by Cooney Cross, but they've won it back, Leicester. Goodwin. The fire quickly, and in the end, it was a tame effort. It comfortably into the hands of Zinsberger. Well, going back to your previous question, Pien, I think, you know, as far as Arsenal are concerned, they've certainly created the chances, the moments, and it's about big players with big characters taking the ownership and taking those moments. And, you know, certainly in that first half, Leicester shown that they were worthy of, of that the big characters the big moments stepping it up in the right right time using the right execution and cast chasing it down but nevin was to it but this is an opportunity here for lacas and it is exactly the reaction that arsenal needed at the start of this second half chloe lacas with her second of the season and what a time to score as well. They're right back in it. And that's a big moment for sure. Look at this, great work, rolling in field four. She puts it in an area, there you go, Lacasse. Use your pace, use your strength. And then slot it home, really good finish. Can Courtney Nevin be a little bit stronger in that situation? She looks like she's favourite to the ball, but again, we spoke at the start of the game, how Lacasse reads the game. She senses the danger, she senses a mistake. It's certainly game on. Not so comfortable anymore for Leicester. As you heard in the studio, Caroline saying that Leicester don't concede many at home. But Arsenal have come out firing. And they will be greedy for more. Russo. Rantala. It's an excellent ball from Ford. She puts it in an area. And again, that's a big moment for Lacasse. You know, she's still got a lot to do. Non preferred foot. Look at this. Looks where the keeper is and slots it in. Kane over to Rantala, but couldn't quite hold on to it, and now it's a chance for Wubba Moy to charge forward for Arsenal. Pelova. Ford working hard to try and get away from Bott. Leonardo Morna. Here's McCabe. McCabe again, picked up here for Russo. They've got it. Well, Leicester just stopped and stared. It looked like play had stopped. But Arsenal have got the equaliser. And it's Alessia Russo, who absolutely loves scoring against Leicester, has got another. Well, we saw two quick goals from Leicester in the first half. We've certainly seen two quick goals from Arsenal now. Everyone thought McCabe was going to shoot, the crowd were cheering out, but look at Alessia Russo, all unmarked on her own. She's onside, just got to take her time and pick her spot, but unmarked. Come on, Courtney Nevin, you can see her there. Leave your play out on your left-hand side, come central. 2-2, Two -two. well, what a turnaround this could be from Arsenal. Well, two quick goals from Leicester in the first half, 
Two very quick goals from Arsenal in the second half. What a game we have on our hands. Here's Kane. Trying to weave away past that Arsenal defence. They have the uh, answers this time, and there's quite the collision at the moment there between Antelo and McCabe. Well, let's have a look at this again because the lesser defenders pretty much just stopped and stared and watched Alessia Russo have the space and time to find the equaliser. Well, like you say, I'm sure she couldn't believe, but what vision from Katie McCabe to pick her out. You know, Alessia Russo, she hasn't had that much time and space all in the first half. She was so tightly marked. There you go, good first touch, open your body up so Leipzig can't guess which angle, which corner you go in, and then just produce the goods. Just letting everyone know he wasn't offside. <laughs> I was going to say. Well, it was her second in the league this season. It's her fourth in all competitions for Alessia Russo. And here is the uh, challenge that Heath McCabe suffered there from Rantala. It's from the blind side, wasn't it? Katie McCabe didn't know where she was coming from. It's a harsh connection from Peter Min. Russo and Howard now down. We just clashed with each other. Well, those players certainly aren't going to pull out of that, are they? It's been so tenacious, really competitive all, all game. All eyes on the ball, though. Arsenal who certainly have come out the better in the second half and the Arsenal traveling support certainly enjoyed watching the start of this second half because they needed a reaction and why well, did they get one they certainly did and that first goal I think the way that Lacasse stretches the pitch I think Arsenal can play that ball more often in behind into the channels so it's got something to run on they certainly the the front three of Arsenal certainly have the, the pace over the back four. There you go, look, look at the way Chloe Lacasse changes the direction. She thinks he's going outside, quickly cuts. And there you go. You're giving England's number nine all that time, space, just to pick a spot. Sophie Howard is back up on her feet. Looks like she's going to be okay to continue. Oh. She looks to be in quite a bit of pain. But play goes on. Here is Kane. He was looking for a foul there. The referee didn't see anything, and so McCabe had the space to come forward. This is Ford for Arsenal. Russo is ahead of it. Now Leonel Simonim as well. Excellent defending by Thibaut. Reading the situation, staying calm, staying level-headed. Because Arsenal was certainly going forward in numbers there and pace.
it's been such a good battle between these two. It's tight, tight, isn't it? They're both giving as good as they get. Chancellor came to charge at this for Leicester. Kane looking for the right cross. And it flashed across the face of goal and there was nobody in the blue shirt who was ready to get on the end of it. Now a chance for Cass. Eyes are forward for Alessia Russo, who's got Caitlin Ford. Ford! For the first time in the game, Arsenal are ahead. And in some style too from Caitlin Ford. What a finish. And what a turnaround from Arsenal. They look so dangerous in the transition moments. We've just seen a good ball from Harry Kane. Here we go, comes from the clearance and there we go. Let's transition. Put the ball, quality of ball, put it into space. Alessia Russo's off. Good ball into the space and she's got something to chase. She knows where Caitlin Ford is. All Caitlin Ford's got to do is stay on side. I think she's on side. There you go. And what a finish. There you go, Palovra. You missed in the first half. I'll show you how to finish that one. That is supreme. What excellent counter attacking football. The precision, the accuracy, the pace on the ball. No one's stopping that. But again, we didn't see that from Arsenal, did we, in the first half? We saw poor execution or sloppy decision making. But you could, that gets better every time you watch it, that finish from Caitlin Ford. Well, it seemed it was only going to be a matter of time for Arsenal. The way that they'd started this second half, what a superb finish from Caitlin Ford for her first WSL goal of the season. And it's Hannah Kane who has come out the worst of that challenge. I think the most pleasing thing for Yona side of Ali he hasn't had to make a substitution, has he? You know, obviously they've had words at half time. And it's the players on the pitch that have rectified the situation. And then with the delivery. Looking for a penalty, Leicester, but Arsenal can try and get away from it. Can he cross? This play is ahead of it. One of those is Lacas again. Plays it to Paloma. Well, she wasn't missing this time. Arsenal in cruise control. Victoria Paloma makes it 4 2 to Arsenal. This is some turnaround. First of all, there's a penalty shout, isn't there, by Hannah, Hannah Kane. It's really soft, Alessia Russo's touch on her. But there we go, Cooney Cross, she knows they're vulnerable on the counter-attack. Let's get them playing forward. Keep the ball moving forward. Chloe Lacasque, she can go for goal herself. That's another tight one, isn't it? But they're doing so well. And pull over, there you go. She stepped up, delivered in the second half. Fair play to her. But again, Leicester need to be careful because every time Arsenal have got space, they've got runner, willing runners, and they've found that magic stardust in the second half that they were missing in the first. Arsenal sparkling in the second half. Leicester seem to have lost their confidence. What's changed about Arsenal in this second half? The intensity, the, the transition moments. Well, my apologies, it wasn't Hannah Kane and Missy Goodwin. My apologies. 
Yeah, I just think they're playing the space, aren't they? They've got the intensity, they've got the willing runners, making good decisions. I think Arsenal are so exciting when they're playing counter-attacking football, and unfortunately, Leicester have just fell into their hands. Howard. Here's Lucas. Pullover. Here is Pullover for Arsenal, who has space to head forward and looking for another chance for Arsenal. Every time they do find that threat on goal, they look likely to score. Here's Ford. Weaving away into the penalty area as well. Away by Rantala this time. Well, there was a yellow card for Sam Tierney just after the goal was scored for asking about the penalty. You can see her on the edge of the box there complaining to the referee, and there she has shown a yellow card. Now the question is, do Leicester have what it takes to try and get themselves back into this game? That's a big question, isn't it? Have they got the leadership, the maturity, the togetherness to find a way to come together and gradually claw their way back in? Well, it seems like Arsenal are ready to make a couple of changes start of the second half and of course they have quite the uh, forward threats really on the bench Lacasse got there in the way Now look at that for a triple threat. Mead, Laxtenius, Hurtig, all ready to come on. And here is Palopa, who has a bit of space now for Arsenal. Hold it back, and Alessia Russo was making her way through. Well defended in the end by the Leicester back line. Thibaut away. Just 11 and a half minutes between the first Lacasse goal for Arsenal and the fourth goal for Arsenal from Victoria Pullover. It's incredible, isn't it? When you have that much attacking talent, the quality, that's all it takes. A short amount of time to really get a grip hold of the game. And still a big chunk of time to go as well. How will this game end? We've got an exciting 25 minutes or so still to play. Do Leicester have what it takes to show what they showed in the first half? Or is this Arsenal confidence too much to handle now? Well, here come the triple changes then for Arsenal, starting with Chloe Lacasse, who scored the goal that inspired the comeback for Arsenal. Frida Leonard and Monen also makes way. And Caitlin Ford, who was also off the mark this evening makes way. So, Beth Mead, Lena Hertig and Stina Blackstinius, the three to come on for Arsenal.
and they are probably three names, Laura, that Leicester didn't want to see come on, especially at this point. Well, exactly. They've got over 20 minutes to really prove a point. It's an opportunity to get assists, to get a goals. And we can see Alessio Russo's dropped into that 10 roll now with Blackstenia. She'll be the highest focal point stretching the back line. Hurtig to the left and Beth Mead on the right. Here's another opportunity for Arsenal as they fired it through and it was punched away by Leipzig and almost pounced upon by Blackstenius immediately. Arsenal are in their flow now, isn't, aren't they? They just look quicker, sharper than anything that they showed in the first half. Blackstenius could have scored with her first touch. Here's Beth Mead. Just missed there by Russo, and here's a chance for Lesser to come forward in their numbers. Kane didn't really have much support around it. Rantala is, is chasing it down. Zinsberger has it now for Arsenal. Here's Hurtig. Now Mead. Then it's wanted in and it flashed across the face of goal and away by CJ Bott. But they are fired up Arsenal. They certainly are. The switches of play are much better. Again, we saw Ford rolling in. We've seen Hurtig rolling in and switching the ball. And again, it's good pace, good touch by Leipzig and CJ Bott. I'm not too sure she knew much about this header, but again, really well defended. Across the delivery, it's a good header and very nearly found a fifth goal. Hurtig making very nearly an instant impact. Yeah, she started the game well. Again, just a flick, you could see what she was trying to do. And again, a really good top effort. So a change then for Leicester City. Yuta Rantala for Aileen Whelan. And puts the captain's armband back on. She missed the defeat against Liverpool in the last game due to an injury, but Leicester fans will certainly be pleased to see their captain back on and back playing again. She's a really important player for Leicester. Huge experience, huge leadership. Such work rate, leads by example and quality on the ball with the goal goals that she scored this season. Here's Russo. To fire it across the mead. Well, was in the right place at the right time, just couldn't quite get enough to find the target. Again, now she's in that 10 roll, she's got a license, she freed up. She can lose her markers a little bit more e easier. And again, that's a great quality of ball. And for Beth Mead to have that connection, to keep it down, really good execution. Nevin. Here's Howard. McCabe. That's a tale of two halves, isn't it? Look how dominant Arsenal have been in the second half. 
you know, just blew Leicester away with every statistic. And they've been a totally different team, haven't they, this second half? Well, whatever Yunus Edeval said at half time, it certainly worked. This is Fluxtenius who will chase it down to try and get away from Thibaut. Again, quick ball stretching behind Blackstenius's arm, play the space, but Thibaut does well, gets goal side, stands up. Again, just makes Blackstenius have the last touch, a vital touch there, really well defended. Over Moy. Quite one of the best passes that Zinsberger has played. Howard, a little bit too much power behind that. She was searching for Hannah Kane. Russo. Catley. It's a release for Lover. It's a brilliant ball as well. Now a chance here, but Stenius! It's a fit for Arsenal. A brilliant team goal. Finished off by Stina Black Stenius. And now Arsenal are becoming too hot to handle. They've turned it into a masterclass this second half. Look at this, switch the ball, good patience from Melesi Russo, stay on the ball, find the spare player on the opposite side of the pitch. Look at this ball from Catley, but there's a William runner. Pullover, there you go. I'll put it on a plate for you, Black Stenius, find the corner. They just make it look so simple, but what a ball that is from Catley into the path of Palova. And again, it's first time from Palova, first time finish from Black Stenius. Leicester defenders can't get anywhere near. The Arsenal players are just pulling them all over the place. A fifth goal for Stina Black Stenius in all competitions, her third in the league. She is very much enjoying the start to her season and they may be getting more Arsenal. It just seems like it's too much, too far away now for Leicester to try and come back into this game. Yeah, certainly, Pina. I think it's a really harsh lesson that Leicester have got to learn. No matter how good you are in the first half, how much you compete, how clinical you are in the first half, when you play historical top teams with this much amount of attacking talent, you've got to play for 90 minutes plus. And it's a really tough mindset. But all credit to Leicester, they could have been really pragmatic, I think, maybe last season, season before. Teams down the bottom, you would have seen, you know, deep defending, all players back behind the ball. But, you know, the way Leicester are playing this season, how aggressive they are, player for player, how composed they are, they've got the quality of goals that they can score. You know, all credit because you learn so much more about yourselves in these games, going toe to toe playing your style, playing your identity, than sometimes so pragmatic, so deep. Well, Arsenal absolutely dominant in this second half. What a difference to what we saw in the first half. Well, Leicester, you have to give it to them with a better team in the opening 45 minutes, but Arsenal have managed to turn it around and in some style too, and they are hungry for more. It just doesn't look like there's any stopping them at the moment when they are feeling like this. When you're playing like this and going forward, you don't want the game to end. You know, everyone wants the ball. Everyone, all of a sudden, they've got an injection of energy, making runs, showing for the ball. Everything that, that you're playing comes off. 
you're just in the flow of five different goal scorers for Arsenal. And they are back in action again next week as they travel to Brighton. Brighton against Arsenal. That's next Sunday from one o'clock on Sky Sports Football. And then look at this for a fixture. The Manchester Derby. Manchester United against Manchester City in the Women's Super League next Sunday from four o'clock on Sky Sports Football. We can't wait for that one. Clear foul by Thibaut. She gets too aggressive, gets too tight too early. When you look at the WSL table as well, of course it's early days, and it's something that Jonas Edeval speaks about as he's, he's not looking too closely at the table at the moment, but goal difference is such a big deal, isn't it? Especially when it's so tight at the top, and here's another opportunity to get another one for Arsenal. Couldn't quite make it this time, but the goal difference, especially when you look at the end of the season, it could be the difference. Yeah, that's right. And I think players and staff and managers know that, you know, you, especially when you find your team, when you're playing so well in the second half, you just want your team to keep going. Don't let your standards drop. Don't rest on your laurels. Keep driving. Try and get the maximum out of each other that you can. Hannah Kane still struggling at the moment. And there is going to be quite a few changes for Leicester City then for these final 10 or so minutes of this game. So Amy Palmer, Josie Green and Ava Baker are all the three that will be coming on. So Anna Kane makes her way. It was, uh, had a really important, especially in that first half, played her part in getting those two goals. CJ Bott and Sophie Howard are the other two who make way. So Palmer, Green and Baker on. Okay, and through to Lena Hertig. To weave away through Hertig off the post. Denied by the woodwork again, Lena Hertig. The keeper got a touch to it. Well, here come Lester. Good win. He switched over to this left side. Ran out of steam at the end, and it was well defended there by Arsenal. Also forward, and the flag is up anyway. Be interesting to see this one. Really close, but look, Blackstenia's doing what she's doing, stretching the ball. She's still in her own half. Again, she stretches the game so well. Willing runner every time a player. The midfield player's got time and space and looking forward, she's off. She's on the back shoulder, makes such good runs. Leipzig. It's been a busy night for her. Anina Leipzig. And that will go Arsenal's way. Well, 
Leicester haven't really shown any signs of even trying to get a consolation goal, which is probably all that it would be after Arsenal have found this very impressive comeback. Leicester, who finished the first half in some style, 2 0 up, have completely lost it in the second half. Arsenal too strong as Cooney Cross plays it in, but not the best one for her of the evening. Here's Nevin. Not too good win. Can't hold on to it. Well, we were saying in the first half, Laura, that the defeats that Lassa had suffered were tight ones. They weren't big defeats, but this is something that they haven't experienced yet this season. To have to try and pick your heads up after such a big defeat, but here the player stopped again for Arsenal, the free kick. But Leicester will certainly have to look at themselves at this performance and see how they can, what lessons they can learn, especially after being so playing so well in that first half. Yeah, you're right. It'll be a tale of two halves, won't it? I'm sure the analysis will be split, split into the good, the bad, and the ugly. But you know, to perform like that against a top team for 45 minutes, you can take huge credit. But then there's so many learnings from the second half. They've got Tottenham at home, which would be a really tough game. But, you know, now it's this second half is all about character, willingness, staying in the game, you know, staying together. Can you show experience and leadership? Yeah, but I think they're shell-shocked this second half. Here's Pelova for Arsenal. Goodwin looking to keep it at bay, but here is Baxtenius and fires it into the side netting. I mean, Blackstenius, she's added a different injection, a different dynamic since she's come on. Look how alive she is and how quick this turn is to get a shot off. Wheelan. by Mead and now Pelova. Yep, Peterman. Cooney Cross. And one back here by Kaiman. Baker. Well, they haven't really had an easy set of fixtures, Leicester, recently, and it doesn't get much easier for them either. Tottenham, they've got Chelsea coming up, Brighton as well, so a tough run of fixtures to try and get themselves out of this uh, run of defeats that they're on at the moment. They've also got Manchester City and Manchester United in the League Cup as well, so haven't really been drawn in the easiest group there either. These are the next couple of fixtures, as you can see. Tottenham, Chelsea, Brighton, the next three that they've got coming up. Well, exactly. It's a tough run, isn't it, until Christmas. But again, that's what Willie Kirk will have been installing into his players. This is when it starts character. This is how much you've got to show that you learn, can take on information, can really, you know, learn and listen in training, execute what we're trying to do and keep just improving. If the performances improve and they can stay that good for a little bit longer than 45 minutes, you know, they will get that statement win that he's after. And Tierney was hoping she could find the feet of Peterman. What changed for Leicester for you in the second half? I don't think it was Leicester. I think it was Arsenal, Peen. I really do. I think they were, they were playing forward quicker into spaces. You know, the William runners of Lacasse, of Russo, of Ford, Palova being more involved in the game. It was, it was all Arsenal, to be honest. You know, they came out a completely different outlook.
Here's Nevin. Zinsberger. McCabe. McCabe certainly enjoyed that role, hasn't she? She's got the license to go in field as a centre midfielder. You know, maybe not on that occasion, but she's certainly been very effective with the ability to switch the play, switch the ball. There's Catley. She started every WSL game, Steph Catley, for Arsenal. She's been one of the important key players for Jonas Sederval and certainly one of the first names on the team sheet. There's going to be another change for Arsenal. That's been cool. It's getting ready. The same facial expression that he had at the end of the first half, Jonas Edeval. Much, much happier now, I think. Yeah, that's pretty understandable, isn't it? Christina <laughs> Black Stenius judged to have handled that ball. Jonas Edeval wasn't quite happy with the challenge, though, before it. Nevitt. Good win. Going forward and now Whelan. This is across to Baker. With this is a chance for Leicester, but the flag is up against them such a good move from Leicester isn't it up back through Courtney Nevin does so well look at that set from Peterman again she's just offside Ava Baker a really good talented youngster and again just a bit too eager to get ahead of the ball well we're into 10 minutes added time which is quite the long time, really. I thought we might get quite a bit because of the goals, but we didn't expect 10 minutes. I think you have to expect that now in the modern game, don't you, as players, managers? You have to expect an extended amount of time at the end. Try their best to try and keep it in. Well, there's a change for Arsenal then. So Alessia Russo, who scored the equaliser for Arsenal. Much better second half from Alessia Russo. The impact, the moment, and that finish certainly set her team on a way. And so a first WSL appearance of the season for Catherine Cool. I think she was impressive in the, the midweek in the Continental Cup. Evervescent in the midfield, lots of energy, good quality on the ball. Well, she's had a really good first touch as well. This is Lena Hertig who plays it across, looking for Beth Mead! Off the post! Well, Beth Mead so very close to getting a sixth for Arsenal, to getting her first of the season. I think every Arsenal fan in the ground was wishing that one to go in. What a move that would have been and what a perfect moment for Beth Mead. Okay, 
Michael, what an introduction. Your second, third touch. There's the ball. Go on, Hurtig, get after that. And again, Beth Mead. Again, great connection. Lighting just does enough, doesn't she? Make sure it doesn't nestle in that corner. Here's Blackstenius. Well, Beth Mead is the player who was involved. And Serena Riefman will be watching on, hoping that all of her players for the Lionesses will stay fully fit. The good news is she's back up on her feet and she seems to be okay, Beth Mead. Stenius knew it, that the flag was going to be up against it. Better line from Leicester, wasn't it? Reading the play, reading the situation, let her roam offside. <laughs> Beth Mead. Pullover. Here's Cooney Cross. Who, by the way, has taken the opportunity. Kim Little, of course, not involved through injury in this game. So, Kara Cooney Cross making her first start in the WSL, and she's looked to be ending the game as well. How do you think she's done? Yeah, ex exceptionally well, especially in the Conti Cup. She went off with cramp, so I'm sure this is a huge learning curve for her. But a seasoned international for for Australia, you know, it's just. It, the pure excitement, the quality that she shows, the composure for such a young player. You know, it's just a such great foundation for her to build on now. Pullover. Her take. The pullover again. This is good play from Arsenal. Here's a chance for Beth Mead. Denied by Leipzig. Great save. And it's not often that Beth Mead is denied from close range. And again, Leipzig's shown us all, reinforces the stat that we've shown earlier first for saves. You know, she can produce those moments. Everyone in the ground thought that that was a goal from Beth Mead. She would have buried it. This is a wonderful ball from Pullover. Look at that on a plate. Good first touch from Beth Mead. Again, it's straight at her, isn't it? She's got to pick a corner. You know, got to have a little bit more disguise on her body shape. So the change for Arsenal then. Kyra Cooney cross makes way for Noel Moritz. He will play her best part of the last four or so minutes of this 10 minutes that were added on. Here is Pullover. Back to Illestedt. Beth Mead across to Moritz and Mead again who had her sights on goal. She'll be hungry to try and get one for Arsenal before this game ends. Here's Pullover again, looking to force her way through that midfield of Leicester. Picked out Moritz, who was in space down that right side. Moritz across. This is her take. Well, Moy. Oh, 
Popalova again. Now looking to release Hertig. This is Hertig! They do have six, Arsenal. The three points wrapped up. Six goals in the second half. Lena Hertig adds her name to the score sheet. Well, she's hit the woodwork a couple of times, hasn't she, since she's come on? But look at this work in centre midfield from Palova. Great ball, great staying on side from Hertig. And again, she finally has her chance to make her mark and slot that home nicely. But again, we've got to ask questions with a Leicester defence all over the place. Not tracking runners, not a good line, no communication. But again, that's not taking nothing away from Hertig's moment. Good finish. Well, what a way to get your first Women's Super League goal as well for Lena Hertig. Thibaut, force back to Leipzig. Zinsberger. Here's Beth Mead. Tierney. Baker. And collected again by McCabe. Into the final few seconds. Chance, Laura, to tell me your player of the match. Well, I think especially with Arsenal's hot midfield, Volti and Kim Little missing, she's been imperative tonight, Palova. Just her movement in midfield, her ball, her through ball, she got herself a goal. You know, just how composed she is. Her vision, her awareness. You know, she plays above her years. A goal, two assists, ch chances created. You know, she's been the star player tonight, along with others. Don't get me wrong, they've all contributed, especially in the second half. But, you know, especially with that hole with Volti and Little missing, she stepped up and produced. There's Nevin. <laughs> Howard. Tierney over to Baker. Into the hands of Zinsberger. Hasn't really been tested in this second half. Well, what a difference a half-time team talk can make. Jonas Edeval's side, what a turnaround in the second half. Six second-half goals. And it was a thrashing in the end for Leicester, who themselves had started brightly in the first half. Two goals for them in the first 45 minutes, but six different goal scorers for Arsenal who can celebrate three very, very big points. Well, it will be lessons learned for Willie Kirk's Leicester side, but there's a standout goal as well from Caitlin Ford who scored a goal that she will remember for a very long time. But plenty of different goal scorers for Arsenal to celebrate. Full-time score here. What a turnaround. Leicester 2, Arsenal 6. Almost feel like we need to say that score again. Such was the score at half-time. 2-0 down at half-time, Arsenal. 6-2 winners. Peen, Laura, thank you.
Bethany, what happened in that second half? Honestly, it was a bit of a madness, really. I think that's the Arsenal that we know. That's the Arsenal that we're used to seeing, dominating the ball, dominating possession, using the whole width of the pitch, switching play, and in the end, created some great chances in front of goal, made it simple, and, yeah, great win. I will talk to you in a minute, Is but the noises you were making when Pelova was on the ball, she was a different class that second half. Yeah, she was exceptional for me, and I think very well-deserved player of the match because her vision, the through balls, the splitting passes between centre-halves, getting in on the back line, her finish as well, the desire and willingness to get in the box, I think, yeah, as I said, she's been outstanding. You can see her having a word there, Izzy, but the shot before that was of Beth Mead, a couple of goals she would have potentially had in that second half. Yeah, I'm sure Beth uh, Mead would have loved to have got in on the act, um, but I think, you know, from, from her journey to recovery, seeing her back on the pitch is the most important thing. She can see her pictures of her here. Yeah, you can always read what she's saying, can't you? She's gutted that she didn't get on the score sheet, but I think knowing Beth, deep down, she'll be delighted that the team got the win after that um, very uncomfortable first half for Arsenal. <sighs> Quick word on Leicester. I mean, we will go more in depth on, on this, but they just didn't hang on long enough after half-time, did they? No, and I think for me, you're coming out at half-time 2-0 against Arsenal. You know you've got to make sure that first 10 minutes, you, it counts, make it count, make it sure that you're a tight block in between, but they came out too hard and I think they just got torn apart in the end and they couldn't match Arsenal standards. I, I think the harsh lesson for Leicester is that fundamentally the defence fell apart in the second half. Um, I think we, we spoke about it at half-time and said that they can't take any risks. Holding a 2-0 lead at half-time against Arsenal is a massive thing, but you've almost got to park that and leave the second half almost as nil-nil again, and you've got to start again and take no risks, and I thought they took too many risks at the back especially, and it gave Arsenal an invitation. You said to it at half-time, just don't do it. Absolutely. It, it, you know what? Against top, top teams, you cannot give easy mistakes and invitations back into the game, and that's exactly what Leicester did. All right, that rounds off your WSL weekend then with a 6-2 win for Arsenal at Leicester. Just one of a number of big results this weekend, not least that win for Brighton at Manchester City. How that changes things up in the table. Manchester United with a 5-0 win over West Ham. That 1-1 draw between Spurs and Liverpool. 3-0 win for Chelsea and first points of the season for Aston Villa, which leaves your table looking like this this Sunday night. Chelsea then top of the table, Arsenal up into second, three points behind Manchester City, six points off the top now, Leicester stay in seventh, Villa off the bottom after that win against Bristol City. Not just about the Women's Super League here on Sky Sports, tune in for the Kamita Swins on the Women's Championship show every Thursday, 6.30 for that one. And both semi-finals of the Cricket World Cup finally here Wednesday and Thursday, back to back on Sky Sports Cricket, eight o'clock start in the morning for that one. More reaction to come then from Beth and from Izzy. What a first half for Leicester, but the Gunners finding their sights in that second, or some could say their sixth sense. Keep on watching us on Sky Sports Premier League and on Sky Sports Football. If you're watching us on Showcase, we'll see you soon. Well, the first half must seem an age away for Leicester City fans. They were 2-0 up before this from Chloe Lacasse made it 2-1. And just two minutes, 18 seconds between that and 2-2 from Alessio Russo. Great vision from McCabe. And what a ball from Russo, turning provider for Ford to make it 3-2 on 58 minutes. And that was really it for Leicester. Lacasse, who had another great game. Passes it into Pelova, 4-2, 5-2 from Stina Black, Stennis on 75 minutes. And then to round things off for Arsenal, Lena Hertig made it 6-2 on the night. The real standout stat from this match is that 5.75 expected goals for Arsenal, which is the highest of any team in the WSL this season. 15 of their shots came in that second half. After a first half where they drew a blank, the Gunners firing in the second 45. Plenty of that down to Victoria Pelova, who was the player of the match, and she's been talking to Juliet Farrington. Victoria, that was some match and some comeback. Oh, yeah. I don't believe it. We were 2 0 behind. And how long? Like, it took us five minutes to score two goals, so it was an amazing uh, game. What happened in the first half? I don't know. I've, I mean, I think it would be a different game if I had scored the first one. Um, 
So I, and then they just scored two. Yeah, I don't know why. What was said at half time? Because something, whatever was said by Jonas, I assume, and your teammates as well, you are a completely different team. Um, they go one for one, so we just had to beat our, um, how do you say, opposite. Um, so yeah, that's what he said, and we are, yeah, we just had to do better. And then we came out and we did great, actually. Just did even better than great. You, you, it was a phenomenal second half. It was, that's nice to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a statement win? for you and the team, considering people have said that Arsenal have been a bit, bit of a slow start for you this season? Um, I mean, I don't listen to what the people say, but um, slow start. I just think we have to see it game per game and don't see like don't look back now and just win every next game that we have. In a way, is this set, the performance, the level now that, that you've got to continue to do and perform? Of course, yeah. I mean, um, Leicester gave us a lot of space second half, so that helped a bit as well. But yeah, of course, we have to play always like this, yeah. Victoria, your English was fantastic, <laughs> and you are the Barclays player of the match. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it is. And if you go on the Sky Sports YouTube channel, you can see another interview with Victoria Palova where she's talking about uh, English words like balderdash. And again, just showing her personality. She doesn't listen to what people say. Listen to this, Victoria. Bethany, she was brilliant, right? Yeah, she was outstanding for me. Honestly, I thought she played so well today. Again, like I said, splitting passes, creating opportunities and getting on the goal herself. When we were going into this match, she was one of the players that, that you highlighted that you thought could, could be a real standout since. I think it was when the Netherlands played England. She just really showed this confidence and this maturity. She's just really grown into her game. Yeah, and I think you're seeing that in her performances. The more game time she's getting, she's, she's been a playmaker almost. I think we spoke a lot at the start about Cooney Cross, but for me today, she was the playmaker in that midfield and she ran everything through and she's a big reason as to why Arsenal won that game. There were quick back-to-back -back goals for them to make it 2-2, two -two, then 3-2. It was hers at 4-2. At um, when you just see, again, she'd been nearly, nearly getting on the end of some of them. Yeah, listen, this was the, the, the penalty shout from Leicester, and I do think they had a shout. It was, it was close, but then they were sleeping. Leicester and Arsenal broke. And I, what I love about this is the pass from Cooney Cross. I spoke about it before the game. How often we see that pass going behind someone. It's gone right into the path of Chloe Lacasse and it's a really unselfish square. Here's the penalty shout again. There was, was contact, but the referee was in a good position to make the decision. And then Pullover just making that lung bursting run into the box and a, a smooth finish at the end. But Chloe Lacasse, again, a player for Arsenal today who, who was a, a bit of a game changer at times. Fantastic performance. Two assists as well for Pullover and it's that intent as well, isn't it? That that Izzy was talking about. Yeah, and I think, like I say, what we've seen is that people are willing to get in the box. You want them willing runners. And from the first half to the second half, we've seen Arsenal make better decisions in the box. Like, I say, it's a square pass and it's just an easy tapping for her compared to the first half, trying to make the most difficult of a shot. And I think it worked out well for them. So she makes it 4-2 and then for Black Stenius to make it 5-2. Again, we've seen Stina make these sorts of, of runs too. And just were formidable up front. Yeah, but can we just appreciate that Steph Catley ball on, straight into Pullover first because what a splitting pass that is. And again, the vision from Pullover to, to find Black Sinius. And I think she's definitely come on leaps and bounds in terms of her finishing being much more cool, calm, collected in front of goal. And I think this was a tidy finish and, like I say, took it first time and set Arsenal on the way. All those changes that, that Arsenal made again, just getting them on. Lena Hertig comes on and she had a couple of chances as well. You thought could have done a bit better and then gets the sixth. Yeah, Lena Hurtig, I feel like she's had a bit of a slow burning start since she, since she joined Arsenal, but it would have done another world of good to get on the score sheet today. You can just see her Leicester's high line just created that space and behind, and Hurtig, you know, a super composed finish. You can just see from this angle here, again, it's, it's Pullover with that pass, a beautiful weight that doesn't tease the goalkeeper out. And then this from Hurtig, she just gives her the eyes. She gives Leipzig the eyes, and like I said, that's a, that's a really important goal for Lena Hurtig on a, on a personal basis. We're going to hear from Jonas Eidevald in, in a bit about what he said at half-time. I mean, clearly something worked, but you <laughs> saw it just wasn't really ticking in that first 45 minutes. Was it speed of ball? Was it passes? What was it they were doing precisely in that second 45? 
I think, as I said, it was just the Arsenal way. I think they dominated possession. They were getting in and around second balls much quicker. They weren't turning over possession as sloppy. I do think Leicester died off a bit in terms of their press and their intent getting at them like they did in the first half. But in the end, Leicester created too many spaces and Arsenal exploited them terrifically and did the job in the end. Yeah, oh, how sometimes you wish it just ends at half-time <laughs> with Leicester two up. Those are the first two goals they are actually scored against Arsenal in the WSL. Then they went on to concede six. We'll hear from both managers next. No need to look at the watch at the end of that one for Jonas Eideville. Just a quick little look up at the scoreboard. Six goals, the most in the second half of any team in the WSL this season. And they come away with Leicester with the win. Delighted to say that Jonas joins us live now on Sky Sports. Jonas, congratulations. You know I need to ask you what you said at half-time. <laughs> yeah, I, I can understand that uh, question, but to, to be honest, it, it was a little bit emotional in half-time because we needed to apply ourselves much, much better in some of the individual duels that were on the pitch. But apart from that, we kept all the structure for it. Sometimes that's the hardest part because you can get tricked by the result and think that you need to change the structure, but we didn't. We kept everything like that. We spoke about application and I think we were all very agreeable on, on that we needed to show a better version of ourselves in the second half, which we also did. So great credit to the players for uh, for believing and sticking to um, to the game plan that we had, but also applying it much, much better in the second half. Your favourite uh, touch table analyst, Izzy Christensen's here, is he? <laughs> Hi, Jonas. <laughs> Hi, how, Izzy. How are you doing? I'm very well, thanks. How, how do you go about analysing this game? Because obviously the first half, it, is it fair to say Leicester, you know, they, they dominated, they went player for player, they had high pressure on you in all areas of the pitch. And then the second half, like you said, a totally different Arsenal team came out. How do you then debrief this game and move forward from it? Well, from a structure perspective, it's not that different but of course when you choose to play the way that Leicester does if you end up losing your 1v1 duels high up on the pitch you get very exposed but if you win those duels you also have great numbers to play the ball forward to so it's really playing on a knife's edge when you're playing against them and we choose to be quite brave in setting up those 1v1 situations and in the first half I think Leicester were the better team and they were having the most of the success in those situations when in the second half it was us so um, from a structure perspective the same we just need to see what we do in our application you know that makes us much more successful in the second half in the uh, second half as well, there seemed to be a real ruthlessness about your forwards in particular and your two number eights or two offensive midfielders in Cooney Cross and Pullover. There seemed to be lovely passes going in behind, the weight of the passes, more unselfish play in the final third. Was that again something you touched on at half time or did the players kind of communicate that amongst themselves and figure that problem out? That's great football players in, in action. Uh, <laughs> I, I was delighted to see uh, both Palova and, and Cooney Cross in, in midfield today. I thought they were phenomenal, especially in the second half. I thought they were running the show for us there, and uh, that was great to see. I, I think the attacking football we played in the second half, it, it had some great passages, which I really think should, it's what resembles uh, the Arsenal way of playing football, and that was great to see, and uh, that should be the standards going from here on. Seemed like every other question in the press conference this week was about your lack of clean sheets again. It's now, what, eight in a row without a clean sheet? How, how are you addressing that? Well, we, uh, we work on it. Um, and um, th there's not much else that, that we can do uh, uh, with that. Um, uh, I, I'm quite annoyed that we're not having clean sheets. Uh, I think some games it's been a little bit undeserved maybe that we haven't had clean sheets because mm -hmm. we haven't allowed that many goal scoring opportunities. But today in the first half, we definitely allow two big sco um, goal scoring opportunities against us. So it's not a coincidence that we can concede goal and we need to look on that. I think when we see in these games against Leicester, we can't turn over the ball in vulnerable moments. Mm. And that's what we're doing in the first half. Uh, and that creates big issues for us. Um, but we saw the same thing, like both when Man United and Man City were playing against Leicester, they, they were having the same struggles, they were ha having the same dilemmas. Uh, I think Leicester is very brave in the way that they play football. Uh, they stick to their guns, they stick to their game plan. Um, I think it makes for an entertaining 
game, but if we want to have a clean sheet in a game like that, we, we need to keep hold of the ball much better in the first half. Jonas, thank you for joining us live as always. Safe journey home. Thank you, guys. He, he mentioned the player that we've talked about in, in Pulova. That combination in midfield, Arsenal and, and Jonas has talked a lot about creating depth there. Do they seem to have that? Do you think it's a real strength now as they head on for the rest of the season? Yeah, I mean, again, I don't think we can talk about them enough on what they did in that second half. And I think for me, like you say, you're missing Kim Little. I think it was important that they showcased their um, abilities in the midfield today. And that's exactly what they did and producing, as I say, top performances for both of them. What was it you said at half-time Leicester had to do? Play no-risk football. And then the second <laughs> half happened. Uh, Chloe Lacasse, again, a real quality player, makes it 2-1. Yeah, look, Chloe Lacasse's pressure makes this, I think, for being really critical. Courtney Nevin, she needs to deal with that in their first opportunity to deal with it, and she just gives Chloe Lacasse the opportunity. This is a better angle. We see at this very moment, I'd say now, she just needs to put her foot through the ball, and instead she's hesitated. And that, like I said, that gave Arsenal invitation and impetus to then go on and kick on. And you can see the response that Arsenal had from that moment on. And, and it was uh, downhill from there for Leicester. Two minutes between the first couple of goals for Leicester in the first half. Two minutes in the second half for, for Arsenal. And Russo, the touch on this. Oh, honestly, it's phenomenal. I think she holds a line well. Obviously, Sophie Howard's playing them on. But I think, again, the composure... The ability to just tap it round, I think most people panic in their moments and try and lob the keeper, but she's cool, she's calm, collected, and she's definitely, yeah, as you see <laughs> on side, sorry, um, and she just places the ball you, you, calmly into the corner. You've got to question Leicester's back line in that situation. A player, I mean, you don't leave anybody unmarked in that situation, no. especially a player of Alessia Russo's quality. Russo then makes it 2-2. Two, two. Russo turns provider to make it 3-2 as well, but she was doing so much work deep in that Arsenal half? I mean, for me, I think um, everything that she did in the first half, she was in the right positions, just the balls weren't coming to end here. As you see, this first time ball across for Ford is just an exceptional ball on a plate and what a finish, by the way. I think that's outstanding, but that all comes from playing those early balls in behind. What I noticed on this one was so Sophie Howard, just, we just highlighted there, she passes Russo on, but there hasn't been an acceptance of a run. And then Russo, what, what Beth said is excellent in terms of what Russo does, the assist, but she's almost giving an assist to Caitlin Ford that she'd want to receive herself. Mm -hmm. And that's why she's got the awareness and she's got the structure and able to, to, to feed the ball across that, that line. But, but like I said, I think you've, you've got to ask questions of Leicester defensively. All right, we've heard from Jonas Eideville. Let's get the response then from Leicester City boss, Willie Kirk. Willie, before we started this interview, you just went, wow, what happened there? What did happen? Yeah, I'm going to need a couple of days to, uh, to get over that, I think. I think we, what, I mean, what a lesson it is in terms of how good we can be and, and what can happen to you if, if you're just half a yard off it. And and I thought Arsenal were, were supremely clinical in terms of their counter-attacks. Uh, there are a few chances they probably left on the pitch that they're frustrated with, but I thought their, their counter-attacks in that period in the second half were incredible. Uh, I thought we gave a really good account of ourselves. I think to go in 2-0, you know, I th obviously we were delighted with that, but our goals were good. I thought our play was good. I thought I thought our game plan was, was a game was courageous and brave, and I thought we, we carried that out fairly well in the first half. There were still things that we wanted to improve on. I thought our build could have been a little bit better in the first half, but, yeah, crazy. I mean, 6-2 probably doesn't make a big difference. But at 3 2, when we should have a penalty, and then they score within 15 seconds and make it 4 2, the game's probably over at that point in terms of our players being shocked and wounded and struggling to come back from it. I was watching you in your technical area, and you did seem to be quite frustrated at some of those decisions tonight. Yeah, I, just, I, just, I thought there was very little went our way. I thought, any, I thought Arsenal got everything they should have got, and I thought we probably got about half of what we should have got. And uh, that's obviously frustrating, but. There's, there's not that much we can do about it apart from come back and, and control the things that we can control even better. But I think the big the big one for me, and, and I've seen it again, and it looks like a stonewall penalty. Now, once you get the different angles from the cameras and the studios, they might tell me different. But I think at 3-2, when we should have had that penalty, uh, and as I say, I think it's about 15 seconds and they make it 4-2, so that's really frustrating. When you went 2-0 ahead in the first half, I saw you look at your <coughs> watch and I saw you telling your players to to calm down, but then second half, you alluded to it, 
Arsenal's counter-attacking just blew you away. Yeah, they were devastating on it, and it just like every every one they seemed to just they seemed to tuck away, and it was like really hard to do anything about it. There was a, there was a couple of individual moments that I think we'll look back on, and and we've probably been punished like we're half a yard off a press or. We're half a yard off a player who's on the wrong side of us. Uh, we're maybe there was a few moments I think some of the younger players have been caught up with the way the the way the game was going and and they maybe switched off temporarily. But again, if 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 you want to beat the highest level, you've got to understand that if you switch off for a second, you can be punished, and that's what happened to me. Right, if that was a penalty, that was a, a crucial time before Arsenal got up the other end and, and go ahead. But in real time, both of you didn't think it was slowed down. Questionable. S slow down. We're both shouting for that, aren't we? Yeah, I think if I'm a striker, I'm wanting that. But I think in real time, we obviously don't have the luxury of VAR, but it looks like she has caught her. But I, th I think she's looking for it. It is a bit soft. And yeah, I think you can flip the coin either side on that one. So you're saying you two would have gone down. But it <laughs> <laughs> right, clear. It's fine. As long as we know where we stand. Uh, that could have gone on. But if, could, should, would. For Leicester now, I know they've got a certain team close yeah. to your heart up <laughs> next in, in Spurs. The positives from these first two goals that they'll take into that? Yeah, I think they've got loads of positives that they can take from this game, um, especially in that first half. Second half, they obviously need to look at themselves and see how they can keep that tight knit. But look, they've, they've been great in possession. They've been playing brave. They've been getting in on the back line. And I thought they used their speed in the Arsenal's back line very well today. Um, as I say, these early balls from Hannah Kane, the willingness to get in the box and finish these goals was, was phenomenal. So I do think there's many positives. So many positives. I think Willie Kirk spot on in his, his debrief with, with Juliet. I think the learning in this is massive for Leicester. And I, I don't get the feeling watching that performance that they're a team that will be heavily wounded from this performance. I think that that first half will be what Willie Kirk and his staff show the team and say, mm. this is how good you can be. But I think there's a lot of learnings from it from the second half in terms of game management prag pragmatism in football sometimes you can, you can get caught up with the emotion wow we're 2-0 up against Arsenal not many teams do that but then it's like how do we then kick on and retain that and I think that bit by bit you can see what Leicester are trying to do I think they're exciting to watch mm. uh, they've got some fantastic exciting players um, but I think in terms of that second half I thought it was really poor defensively Take a deep breath. We're about to analyse you. This is where it could get a little bit awkward. It won't. We're talking about Bethany England's goals and just how good she is. We can't have you here talking a good game without playing one too. All about Beth next. striker Beth England from Chelsea. She's become one of the world's most expensive team footballers. Muted celebrations from Beth England against her former team. Oh, that's fantastic. How about that? I mean, come on, Bethany <laughs> England. How good is she? Yeah, we don't need to say it, but we will just reiterate it. She's won the Euros, British record fee paid. You've got the freedom of the City of London as well, haven't you? <laughs> not quite, not well, quite. I think, I think you can run your sheep over some bridge or something. You should have that. Uh, just how good is Bethany England? We'll have a little look at this. If we look at the all-time scorers in the WSL, you've still got a target to get yes. to, but you are second in the list at the moment behind... One Viviana Miedemar, how does that feel? I mean, yeah, it's pretty, pretty amazing feeling. Obviously, the best is up there at the top um, and I'm going to be chasing her tail quite a lot, I think, this season if I can. Um, but yeah, for me, it's great to see my name among such greats like Ellen White, Frank Kirby. So yeah, it's a, it's a good feeling. Izzy Christensen, the player you always wanted to be, right? Absolutely, the player I always wanted to play with, let's say. I'd love to have assisted Beth a few times in, in my career. But d does that motivate you, trying to knock Vivian Miedemar off her perch. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's a target for me as a striker, as a professional athlete. I always want to achieve more. I want to score more goals. I want to show that I am the best at what I do and it's definitely a target I can aim for. And we, we just, we, we can see your heat maps. You know, you like to come short as a nine. In those two pictures, what do you like the most about your positioning? I think obviously naturally being at Chelsea, we've been among such 
creators of the ball, my heat map is obviously more closer to goal because I'm getting the assists or the providings from them. But at Spurs, it was kind of like I had to change my game. I had to be more creative as an individual to help the team. I think chances came few and far between last year, unlike what we're seeing this year. Um, so it was more like having to find different ways in myself that I could get on the ball and impact the game and get to goal as quick as I could, really. All right, we've got a few minutes with Beth. So use the hashtag Ask yep. Bethany to get in touch because now we're going to analyse you. This is the bit. <laughs> the but I know you've part. been looking forward to this. Yeah. Izzy, when we first got involved at Sky with the WSL, you were like, the players want to be analysed. <laughs> yeah, well, here we go. So, Beth, you've sent us two of your, your favourite goals yep. for Spurs last season. So, this first one, let's have a look. So, what is it that you're doing in this? For me, I'm just I'm I'm hearing the whistle and I'm on my bike. I just I knew Manners, um, Iwabuchi's intelligence. I knew she was going to feed me the ball. We had one previous and I had one goal in my mind and that was to get to goal and hit it as hard as I could really. And for me, it's just making sure I'm looking at what the defender's doing. If she's giving me a yard to go either way and my, Maya, so she she obviously overstepped one way and I was able to chop inside and find the back of the net. I just want to take it all the way back to the start of this clip because I want to ask you firstly because this this moment Iwabuchi she's got that game intelligence hasn't she where she's seen it quickly but what I think is hilarious about this clip is we just let it run through a little bit May Leticia is going to kill me for saying this if she's watching I'm sorry about that if we have a look at Maya in this picture here you've spun off her shoulder and she's picking up something I think it's a shin pad or 50p yeah. off the floor she just stops so at what what are you thinking when you're driving with the ball I'm thinking goal. I know, obviously, as you can see, uh, Rosella Ryan coming into the picture, but if I'm honest, I didn't even see her. I had one aim in my, my mind, and that was to get to goal as quickly as possible. And I knew, as I said in the first half, I'd had a previous run against uh, Maya, and I think I knew for pace we were kind of matched. And although she got herself back in a great position, I was still able to find a way to get to goal. It was a brilliant finish. I'm just going to take it back to the bit when you chop in on your right foot. So as the, the ball progresses, eventually, you're just thinking sharper than everyone else. I just love that spinning behind. But you just, you're saying you're thinking about scoring, but you're on the halfway line. <laughs> and then I'm going to pause it at this point here because you've got May Leticia. I'm just going to rewind it a couple of seconds. You've got her squared up. She's made an excellent recovery run. Yeah. You've taken it one way. Are you waiting for her? to jinx before you cut do you work on this in training because that bit of movement and the finish is just sublime yeah as strikers we're always looking at center backs and well any defender really on how we can gain an advantage and although she's trying to lock me one side she's still giving me enough of a yard to be able to chop her and as she steps i'm able to cut inside and it's too quick that her body's not able to change and block me and as i say one one aim in mind and that was to get the ball <laughs> in the net and and luckily it went in not a bad celebration either. <laughs> slide. I had to milk it a little bit for the fans, didn't I? <laughs> Don't tell them that. <laughs> and then this is another one we picked out, or you picked out, against Leicester last season. So talk us through this initially before we get into the, the details. I think it's just I was high on confidence in these games. I knew I was hitting well in good form in goal. And this was a must-win game for us. As we know, us and Leicester were fighting relegation battle. So we knew it was going to come down to some piece of magic. Um, and for me, it was just a case of, again, I'm going to goal. Um, we, ne we needed a goal. I think it was a very scrappy game. I think it could have gone either way. I know Leicester in this game, if I remember correctly, Ruby Mace had an excellent chance to put them 1-0 up. And then the other end, I've gone and scored this goal. So it was huge for us as a club and to be able to make sure that we kept our not, not getting relegated, <laughs> some, chance alive, yeah. Some goal, by the way, but it's a similar sort of position as the previous goal against yep. Manchester United. You're sort of coming in off this left-hand side. But what I find the most interesting about this goal, Beth, is the technique. So I'm just going to pause it here. You've got yourself on the edge of the box, and a lot of players, I'm sure, previous or former players as well, or current players, would think that in this position, when you've got a right-footed player coming inside onto their right foot, they're looking to bend the ball into this far corner here with the technique you wrap around the ball. Yeah. But what you've done is you've kind of hit the ball straight and the ball's dipped. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just going to play it through again. If you just watch how you strike it and the Oof. way the ball moves, 
again, was that instinctive or was that your more preferred way of striking a ball from that area of the pitch? And just talk, talk me through. I would say it was more of an instinctive shot. I think the way uh, most people know me and the way my hips are, they sit and the way in which I play, I'm not one for usually curling a ball. Um, but I knew it had to be something special to beat the goalkeeper because she's she was on great form coming in for Leicester and I think it was just a case of, again, she tried to keep me down the line, gave me enough yards and space in between that I could get the chop off. And uh, honestly, I, I can't even <laughs> tell you where it came from, but I was, I was happy when it went in the back of the net, let's say that much. What was your favourite out of them two goals? Um, as much as I love the Man United goal, I think this one meant more because it was more important in terms of getting the points and helping the team yep. um, stay afloat. Can I just say any Spurs fans at home are making the noises I was making then? <laughs> because it's not just you. They've got Martha Thomas at yep. the moment banging in the goals. If we actually have a look around Europe, she's sitting right up there in terms of the number of goals scored behind Le Sommer at the yeah. moment with six. How impressed have you been with her this season? Yeah, I've been very impressed. I mean, look, it was a bit of a blow for me not being able to be there for the team coming back off my surgery, but I think Spurs have recruited really well and Martha's been a shining light for us coming in because she's been high off confidence. The type of goals she's scored, the calibre of player she is, she's holding the ball up well, she's a great runner in behind, she's a workhorse and I think Something that we needed was more than one goal scorer, and I think that's what we're seeing this season from Spurs is different types of goal scorers, but definitely in case of like leading the front line, she's doing a terrific job. How's that going to work with you two <laughs> together? How are you looking forward to that? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to playing with you. I think it's more of a headache for Robert and what his decisions are, but for me, I think I've played in a front two before. I enjoy playing it with Sam Kerr at Chelsea, so I think if that does happen, I'm not saying it will. Again, that's on Robert, but for me, I'm sure it's something that we're going to be able to work with together. We've had loads of questions in for you using the hashtag Ask Bethany. Lots of people want to know why you chose the number nine. It's just strikers number, isn't it? Really, I guess <laughs> I think for me, um, it's just a number that I felt really a part of when I was at Chelsea, and it's a number that I've always loved. And for me, it's, it just shows that you're the out and out striker. And I just want to make sure that I'm continuing to improve my game week in, week out. And I feel like the number nine is just. It's the best number for a striker, really. Well, it's working. It's a boring answer, but <laughs> no. yeah, it's just basically that's it. it the truth is always out yeah. there. Uh, for you and the team this season, another question that people are, are asking is about what your aspirations are, given how it ended last season and where you are at the moment. I mean, just slipped into out the top three tonight, yeah. but where you want to be come the end of the season? I think ultimately the main objective for us as a team is to perform much better than we did last year, play exciting football, have a style of play, engage in the fans, wanting to come and support us. And I think that's exactly what Robert's implementing to us as a team. Mm. Um, we've given much more of an identity and I think we are playing exciting football. But obviously for me, I'm a winner. I want to win. I want to win as many games as we can and keep climbing that table because who knows, as we've seen today, anything can happen in this league. Teams can drop points. Um, so for me, it's just pushing as high up that table as we possibly can. I know you're super proud to be Spurs captain, but can we take you back to another moment that must be surely one of your real highlights winning the Euros? <laughs> and you and your mate Serena, yeah. I know you've seen today. <laughs> yeah, obviously that's a pinnacle of career other than the World Cup. Obviously, we didn't quite win that one, but that moment is just a moment I'll treasure forever. And I think being able to share it with such a phenomenal group of players and staff um, is something that, I'll never forget. Beth, that moment with Serena, was that sort of in the moment? Were you just running onto the pitch <laughs> as soon as the final whistle went and the first person you saw was, was Serena? Serena. What, how, how did that come about? Yeah, that I know it's that this clip went around social media quite a lot afterwards. <laughs> and for me, it was just pure elation when that final whistle went, that the amount of blood, sweat, tears and effort that everyone had put in to get to that point and... Yeah, I just seen Serena turn round and she was in shock. We were all in shock and I've just made a beeline for her. I'm, if anything, I'm glad I just didn't knock her over. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it was just a complete embrace in the hug and it just meant a lot because it was like we all gave so much and sacrificed so much to to be there and to achieve what we did. And yeah, I was so, super proud and um, it was nice to share that moment with her yeah. as well. Yeah, she said you're a resilient player and you can see what it meant to the team, to you, to everyone to be part of that moment. It's meant a lot to us tonight as well. So many questions we haven't been able to get to. So can we drag you back in again? If you'll have me, of course, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we'll have to do some more goals, score some more, yeah. analyse a few more <laughs> as well. Uh, Bethany and Izzy with us tonight. Uh, here's what's coming up then across Sky Sports over the next few days. Next weekend, we have a double header for you from Old Trafford with Brighton, Arsenal and then Manchester United against Manchester City 
from four o'clock. So both those matches next Sunday here on Sky Sports. Hopefully you're not back in here soon because you're back on the pitch. <laughs> yeah. How long to hear? Oh, Bethany England. We love to hear that round the grounds as well again. But for tonight, for Arsenal, they're the team on song. Good night. <laughs>